Good evening, everybody. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to wait just a few minutes for the rest of the people to join. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. And uh, well, I hope your weekend was good and that your Monday was also good. So we're gonna start the class of tonight. Uh, so we're going to check about the platform first. Uh, we were checking about some exercises before. Uh, let's check into this one. I guess some of you had some problems on this one. This is exercise 2.5. So in the instruction says, complete the sentences with the verbs uh, used in business presentations and word in parentheses. So here is the answer, for example, for the first one. Okay, uh, well, we're going to, I was trying with only the part that is missing, but it's not taking that one. We need to enter the whole sentence, okay? The complete sentence. So it has to be something like this. The main reason people believe they are um, poor poor presenters. presenters is because they have allowed this is in past okay they have allowed negative thoughts to grow so that will be it So everything is going to be exactly the same. The only thing that is going to change is allowed, that is going to be in past. And then negative thoughts, the same. And then grow is going to be in infinitive. To, in infinitive. Yeah, to grow. And then the rest is exactly the same until creating a negative image of themselves period the period is very very important okay do you have any questions with number one no it's because they have a lot no. good so the uh, number two is the same you are going to enter the whole sentence not only the part that is missing so it's going to be an effective thought to get um read of stage, stage fright, fright is, is for, for presenters to, to, to tell okay, to tell to tell themselves to focus that will be it and to tell themselves to focus. to focus and the rest is going to be the same no change to tell themselves to focus uh -huh. yes that will be it. So number three is going to be kind of the same. Specialist advice that is in present. Simply present, actually. So specialists advice centers, centers open to design. Okay. While 
to the sign. Why, the... why the sign? Ah, the sign here, the sign. Advice, present and the sign. Okay, yes. That is it. So, specialist, the advice, presenter to the sign, and the rest is the same. To the sign, visually engaging presentations to avoid boring the audience. That will be it, the number three. Okay, the other one says public speaking coaches yes. invite in present again, invite presenters to open. Okay, and the rest is the same. Presenters to open their presentation with a thought provoking question. Uh -huh. And the last one here. The boss once that is in present, but since the boss is a singular one, is he or she, we're going to use S once with S. That is very important. That is rules from the simple present tense. Wants us to go. And the rest okay. is going to be exactly the same. Wants us to go over the organization checklist to make sure everything is ready for tomorrow's presentation. So that will be the structure for this one, okay? Uh, actually, today we're going to do the parts of the book about this part, so it's going to be a little bit clearer on that one. So do you have any questions about this? No. Okay, very good. And the other ones are easy. I guess it's kind of easy, okay? So tonight, we're going to be in class number 11, okay? And uh, the homework of tonight is 2.8, okay? So this will help you to create a draft of a business presentation, put the steps in order, it says. And uh, I mean, analyze your audience, is that step number one, step number two, three, four, or five? So we are going to put in order everything. And there is another part. Are these tips used in an opening or closing business presentations? And it says opening or closing. And we have here, we have to decide which is going to be for that one. So the whole exercise is 10 questions. Five for the first part and five for the second part. Okay, so this is the homework for tonight. Also remember that this week by Thursday, we need to finish the unit two and the midterm test. Okay, this is for this incoming week, for this week actually. Okay, good, my friends. So we're going to check the attendance now. Let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Okay. Present. Good. Present. Perfect. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Zuleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends. So we're going to start the class of tonight. And we're going to start with a video, okay? 
So this is about the topic that we're going to check for this week. So let's see how it goes. As usual, we're going to watch the video and then we're going to provide comments or opinions about the, the video. So here we go. Let's see. Marcus, Managing Director at Quartz Power Group, is presenting a relocation plan to his departmental managers. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming, especially at such short notice. <clears throat> so I'll try not to take up too much of your time. Right. So, as you know from the brief that I emailed you round, the board have made a final decision on relocation. Now, I am aware of the inevitable rumours surrounding this decision, which is why I'm keen to uh, take action as quickly as possible to prevent any further speculation. So as you're aware, there were a, a few options on the table, and the board has, in the end, chosen what I think is the most practical and sensible. As you will see from the brief that I sent round, the board have decided to move all head office operations from this location to the company's Littlemore branch. Now, I'm sure that you've all got opinions mm -hmm. on such a move, but the aim of this session is not to debate the pros and cons any further. You all understand the issues and the, the need to cut costs. And as I've said before, the option to relocate is by far the best option. So the first thing I need us to understand is the office move is definitely going ahead. The decision has been made and there's no going back. Now today, I'd like to talk to you about how we implement this plan. Now, I understand that relocation on this scale does have a huge impact on everyone in the organization, which is why we need to approach it with sensitivity and good forward planning. So I'm going to go through three points. First of all, I'll talk about the key dates and outline a basic schedule for us all to follow. Secondly, I'll cover some potential changes to our working practices that the move may throw up. And finally, I want to discuss how the plan should be presented to all the staff and what we should anticipate in terms of their immediate concerns. So let's start with the key dates. The lease on this building ends on March the 31st. So we have 12 months from tomorrow to relocate. So the last department to move is IT because they need to uh, keep a few of their staff here until the 31st. So that more or less covers the schedule. Now I know that it's a big operation but as long as we keep to the dates that I've shown, I think it should all run fairly smoothly. I mean, obviously there will be a need for you to set your own departmental deadlines, but that's something you can do internally. Now this brings me to my second point and the issue of working practices. Imagine the following scenario. Over the next 12 months, I've asked Paul to take all the necessary steps towards developing a flexi time policy and he'll be contacting each of the departments in due course. So, to sum up, I really believe that this is a chance for us to step back and refresh our current working practices, bringing us in line with the growing trend to work from home and to work more flexibly. So let's move on to the last point in the presentation, which I suspect you will all be most concerned about. 
how are we going to present this relocation plan to everyone? And remember, this move doesn't only affect the staff here at head office, it also affects all the people who work at the Littlemore site already. It is extremely important that we keep the staff informed and involved throughout the process. So, to sum up, the key to keeping people on side is openness and good communication channels. Okay, well, let's leave that there for now, shall we? So that is the end of my presentation. And the next thing you need to do is put the plan into action. <laughs> so over the next few months and weeks, you are going to face some obvious challenges. This relocation will be an upheaval for some, but it will be a refreshing change for others. But as I pointed out in my presentation, we have ample time and a realistic schedule. I actually think there will be benefits in terms of streamlining departments um, and improving and modernizing our working practices. And finally, as long as we all present a unified front on this and explain things clearly to staff, there is no reason why anybody should feel unfairly treated. So it's over to you. Do you have any questions? Maya. Okay, what are the comments or any opinion about the video we just checked? Okay, it was uh, it was uh, interesting because it was about uh, he has uh, the director has presented a relocation plan for the whole company, and he has. Um, very um, concrete uh, throw, uh, indeed she he has put the five uh, five main points for his presentation uh, it is very important to say that he has made it very clear that the meeting was not to discuss about uh, moving or not moving the head operation because the the office will move and going to forward by all means okay and uh, the first point was the key dates the schedule for implementing the plan second point was the potential changes uh, who has uh, the potential changes which is going to take a, a part a, in the working practice, working practice, potential changing, potential changes by a working practices. The third part was how the plan should be presented to everyone avoiding the um, avoiding the misinformation and guarantee guarantee a good communication to everyone and the um, the last one was how will be implemented the plan to put the plan in action like he say and at the end, he has he has made clear that he is not afraid that it would be difficult for for the things because he he thinks it will be a refreshing time to improve and to more uh, for improving and modernizing the work practices at the office. Okay, very good. So that is exactly what happened on the on the. A presentation, right? So he was presenting uh, the 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 points that are relevant for them to move. Uh, what will be the action plan? He was informing. He was, as you can see, there were certain steps that they follow into the presentation. So that was interesting. Any other comments or opinion on the on the video? 
AI teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Everybody, AI. I was thinking about the the present the presenter also mentioned uh, yeah. how this change uh, involve not only workers the operation the also affect the, the external uh, members of the company, right? Exactly. But uh, include also the the change the changes that uh, this uh, plan in action uh, will be do in the in the work, in, in, in general aspect. And I, I think this, uh, this progress or these changes uh, can get, uh, can bring a, a good consequences. All changes uh, firstly affect directly, but uh, we pass the time, uh, we can see good changes and uh, for, for sure uh, it's, to, it's to have a, a better work, a better environment, that's all it. Okay, perfect, thank you. So yes, it's like uh, a presentation about informing and take some points in consideration about what is going to be affected about this movement, things like that were very good. Perfect. Any other comments or opinions on the video? <clears throat> okay. So yes, uh, well, we are going to go more in deep into the unit number two of the book, business presentations. Okay. So as you may intuit, um, for Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring the two or three words for us to check into the new vocabulary. And also, we're going to have a presentation. So you are going to create a small presentation, not that big. I mean, five, mm -hmm. six minutes is fine about any topic. Okay. What is important is that you are going to pre present something in an organized way. The presentation is going to be good. And also the way that we're going to check into that one. So... That is going to be for this Friday. And well, it says uh, for unit two, I will be able to develop an effective business presentation. So if you want for Friday, you can bring a business presentation. But since the, I mean, we don't know many things about your business or your company. Um, I mean, if you want to do it about any topic, it's fine. So presentation about any topic for this Friday, okay? And uh, there are a few questions here. So we'll, we are going to check into that one. Does your position in your job require you to attend business presentations often? Aha, people. What do you say? Yeah, Does almost your almost uh, every day. Almost every day, right, yeah. That that is a very important part of the businesses, right? Good. And I believe that oh, sometimes yes. when you go, Separate. when you go to a presentation, uh, sometimes you go and say, oh, this was a good presentation. The information was important, relevant. Everything was fine. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes we go to presentations that we say, I don't know, it was not good. It was boring. It was difficult to understand. I didn't get what was the action plan. Sometimes happens, right? So what we're going to check into this week is about that one, about how can we create a nice presentation, okay? So whenever we are in front of people, everything goes well. Second question says, does your position requires you to give business presentations often? Sorry. 
So do you deliver presentations often? What do you think? Excuse me, my internet fall down. Ah, okay, Which yeah. One? Yeah, the second question says, does your position requires you to give business presentations often? Um, not too often. I need more to attend business presentations and to participate actively, very actively uh, within the, the meeting. Okay. So, yeah, that happens. Sometimes, I mean, once in a while, sometimes we need to, to do something like that one, right? Anybody else's? In my position, not teacher. Sometimes mm. only attend. All right. Attend, attend. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And uh, so the number three, oh, well, the third bullet point is very interesting. It, what are, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I can hear Teacher. So do you, you do that? In my case, um, do you listen to teacher? Uh, yeah, we're listening to you right now. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I want to to have a participation in the second question, teacher. Of course, go ahead. My case, yes, is, thank you. In my case, it frequently I need to I need I need to do a propose and I need to get information about the, the new business sector, for example, or okay, I guess the there are... specific information of the company is it, frequently have need to have a, a good presentation because is representation of my company, my job, not my company. Okay, very good. So yeah, I mean, that happens sometimes and we need to be ready for that one. I mean, uh, I don't know if you do that in English, but uh, sometimes maybe in the future, we are going to have the chance to do a presentation in English, right? So that's why we're gonna practice that this week. Uh, the third one is an interesting one for everybody. What are tips to prepare an effective business presentation. What do you think? You have to, For example, to be clear okay. with the things that you expose. And, okay. and sometimes you have to you have to make the presentation uh, no okay. imagine you can can you speaking and the people sleeping <laughs> you need to be active i think and you need to to transmit uh, uh, you need to transmit security and, and that the other people understand the the purpose of the presentation because uh, after that, uh, if I went to a business presentation, I need to transmit that I learned to the other people. Maybe the if I'm the, the the sales manager, I need to I need to communicate to the to the sales team, and I and I need to be. Uh, I can I I have to I have to express myself. I think. I think that a good uh, communication is the base to have an effective business presentation. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So, yes, that is a very important part. I mean, the communication has to be clear, concise, 
you need to uh, be aware on what to say so everybody understands uh, what are the points of the presentation. Definitely, that is something very important. Good, thank you, Rose. And what are other tips you can share with the class to prepare an effective business presentation? I think if I if I, if you allow me, I think it is very important to have a clearly a structure for the presentation, like the example we have seen before. And then you you need to know your audience. And you need to use the language of your audience. It is also really important because sometimes we are really, we want to be extremely uh, academic and it will be very complicated for everybody to get the ideas, the main ideas I want to, to communicate. And the other one, I, another tip is to uh, use a strong words and not too much text in your presentation, basic ideas and we uh, we with we know that we need uh, we need to prepare us about the content of every strong words you bring in your presentation. Therefore it's uh, it should be uh, fluently when you explain the key words you are presenting. And the another one is to uh, motivate the people with some jokes and some smiles and, you know, to have some, to put some emotions in your presentation, not to be so cool. More, I think people react very, very nice to emotional presenters. Okay, very good. Interesting. Yeah, all your tips are very, very nice because, I mean, for example, the one that you said that you need to mirror the audience, that is very important. You cannot be too academic if the audience is not like that and not other, the other way either. I mean, if they are very academic and you are very general, very basic, they don't like it. So you need to understand uh, the audience. You need to to have some key words so everybody understands. So everything like that is a very important part. Nice. Okay. Uh, any other tip that you have? Anybody else's? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Um, the presentation must contain the most important points to present. It must be clear. Uh, clear and concise. Concise. Uh, many present uh, concise. Okay. Concise. Many presentation. Uh, many many business presentation help to help to out the weekly or monthly the progress of the work, uh, which is why they are used as progress control by presenting the summary of the work done in a period of time. Okay, very good, perfect. That is very important as well. So, uh, well, the interesting thing is that all the tips that we are going to, that we express already, and the things that we're going to learn is going to be shown in the presentations on Friday, right? So nice, very good. <laughs> Okay, um, last one we're not gonna check because it's something what, that we need to do. So there are some uh, things that we have to check into before we go into that one. So establish credibility. What do you think is that regarding presentation? To establish some credibility. Uh, I can teach a succeed factor for presentation is that the that the attendees uh, has um, belief what you are about to talking uh, what you are talk what about you are talking and and this is uh, therefore it is high recommendable 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 to, uh, recommendable 
to have a, a evidences for the information you are uh, giving to them. Okay. Evidences, statistic, uh, sources, and tell your own experience. It is very good and uh, for me it is very important when you can talk about your own experience and then the credibility go higher. Very good, perfect. Thank it is you. like a framework to to establish a framework of 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 uh, what is a uh, uh, verdad or truth. True. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Thank. You. Perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, that is it, right? So, uh, when you are presenting, or when somebody is presenting, you expect that person to, for well, first of all, that they know what they're talking about, right? and uh, to present real and relevant information. So those things are very important. I believe that when you go to a presentation and they start speaking in the first five minutes, you know, you know if the presentation is going to be good or not, right? So that happens, that happens. So sometimes you say, no, this is not going to be good, right? But sometimes you say, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. So at the beginning of the presentation, that is very important. So you establish credibility from the very beginning, okay? The second one is exactly what my video was saying, audience. We need to, we need to check what kind of people are we talking to, right? Because that is very important. Even when you create a presentation, you sometimes ask who is going to be there. So depending on the kind of people that is going to be there in the, in, as the audience, that way you are going to create the presentation and you think what you're going to say or you are going to present things or figures and things like that one or other things. Right? Very good. The third one, we haven't sp uh, spoken about that one, thought-provoking questions. What is that? What do you think? You know, it is it is a, a method that you use to uh, to to wake up the people. You know, instead to tell everything, you know, and use three or four slides, then you make instead thought provoking questions. You invite the people to think and to participate. Very good, perfect. So that is it, right? Sometimes, I mean, you don't have to stand up and speak and speak and speak. Sometimes you need to to make them think, to make them analyze what is going on uh, and bring them to the topic, right? So they understand what we are going to speak about. So that is a very good technique and it's very important. And the fourth one, what is stage fright? What do you think is that? Fright is to fear. Exactly. So stage fright. Uh, okay. When oh. I go, when I go to the stage, and I, I, I have fear to start to start uh, start a uh, public speaking, to speak to the public, to the audience. Perfect. So that is it. Stage fright is that. I mean, everybody we are different, right? Some people, for some people, it's very easy to go in front of the, uh, an audience in front of people and speak. For some other people, it's not. It's like, oh my goodness, I have to speak. And I might, I might end that your boss says, tomorrow you are going to present. Some people, they they don't sleep at night thinking, oh my goodness, I have to speak what I'm going to say. What happens if they don't understand? So that happens because we are different. Anyways, anyways, we need to handle that one, right? Be sure. Hmm? Or... Or ner nervousness before or during in uh, parents before an audience. That is true. I mean, yeah, sometimes uh, they say your name. and Okay, now we're going to listen to Carla Vasquez. And everybody's, oh, my goodness. And you say, oh, it's my turn. I'm going to die. So that happens sometimes. I mean, and it's normal, you know. That is normal, but that's why as professionals, we need to handle that one. We need to have some techniques, some things for you to 
you need to feel comfortable so everybody feels fine and then the presentation is effective so definitely that happens okay good uh we're not gonna check into that one well engage so speaking about the presentation how do you believe we can engage the audience into the presentation what do you think Uh, when you motivate them uh, uh, to participate and when you establish clear clear rules you know for for the for the presentation then you can engage people and or you can give them some information before the presentation starts and then they are really uh, empowered to participate. Very good, perfect. So there are different techniques. And of course, that depends on the topic. There are some topics that are easier to handle, right? So for example, if we speak about the rights of animals, I mean, I guess almost everybody's going to say, yes, we need to go into that one. But imagine that you speak about changes in the company that are going to affect you. Uh, some people might say, oh, that's, that's something that I don't like, right? I don't want to change. So there are different things that we need to do so we can engage the audience. So at the end of the presentation, everybody says, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we need to. We need to do that change, you know. I know that it's going to be difficult, but we need to do the change. So that happens. And depending on the presentation that we're going to deliver in the audience, we can think about different things, how to engage the audience. The other one is a little bit more captivate the audience. How can we do that? You can captivate uh, the audience when you give a very nice pitch elevator, elevator pitch to start the, the presentation or with uh, nice visuals also. Very good. So that is it, right? Depending on the presentation, depending on the topic again, you're going to present some things that people are going to say, oh my goodness, that is interesting. Uh, sometimes also depends the, the way that you present the topic. Because maybe, I mean, some topics might be difficult, but the way that you introduce them and that they uh, listen to certain things, uh, it's like the movies, right? When you watch a movie, in the first 15 minutes, sometimes you're captivated. You say, oh my goodness, this is interesting. And sometimes not. The way that that you speak, the way that you transmit the your knowledge, uh, many people say, "Oh, wow, that's interesting! I didn't know." And and maybe you uh, you you think I need to know more about it, and and all depend the way that that the that the motivator. It, uh, how how he or she has prepared the the presentation because as uh, my best say uh, the visuals are important because sometimes only speak 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 no make you boring the presentation the visual makes a a a, a role important. Because you are fixed, you're you're fixing your uh, in the presentation. You say, "Oh, I like it," and it's motivate you to 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 you want to know more, and in that way, you don't feel bored the, the presentation. Very good. So that is it, right? Uh, you you say something very important. I mean, it's not only uh, the presentation itself, on the visuals, or the video, and the colors, and the letters that you say also the presenter right i mean they have to to be there motivated um you cannot you cannot present something that you don't believe you need to believe in something so the audience can feel that one they say yeah let's do that one right so that is a very important thing the next one says succinct anybody knows what is the meaning of succinct briefly clearly Exactly. Express. So you need to, as we mentioned before, 
be brief and concise, clear. Think. Right. So everything there gets into this word succinct. You need to be succinct in your presentation. So everything goes well. And at the end, um, it's effective. Remember that we're speaking about effective presentation. So everybody is motivated and that all the information was presented in the proper way. Good. And the last one says mirror someone's words. What do you think is that? You know, the, it is a very good technique for to engage people, you know? If somebody's a... Uh, say something or act something or touch themselves, you can mirror, uh, mirror someone's words so that they feel that you are uh, captivating also the attention of the presenters. Very good. So that is it. I mean, sometimes when you hear an opinion, I mean, you need to say that is it. And yes, we're going to do that one. Even when it's not relevant, you can say, well, we're going to speak about that in other uh, situation or in other presentation. But you need to. You need to do something with that communication, right? Because it's not the presenter, yes, is the one that is presenting a topic, but the audience also needs to interact, right? It's, uh, communication is in both ways. It's not just fluently from one side. It's from both sides. Good, good, interesting. Yeah, we're just starting and we have seen lots of things. So I know that you like grammar. So here we go. How to use verbs followed by a pronoun and an infinitive. This, this is something that we know already, but we're going to review it, okay? Let's see. Uh -huh. um, Adriana Stephanie. Yes, teacher. Yeah, can you please help me reading the chart? Okay. Uh, some birds are common, commonly following be a noun or a pronoun before they take a, they, they, that take infinity complement. Ver plus pronoun noun. Mass a plus infinity. The most common verbs used in this partner include the following advice, allow, and courage, and encourage, uh, encourage, yeah. encourage, expect, invite, invite, invite uh, need, permit, tell, want, warn. Example and uh, letter A professional presenters advise everybody to prepare a detailed draft of the point that will be developed in the presentation. Letter B, see some presenters and short and court, shy and super nervous pre present presenters to take advantage of any public speaking opportunity to get right read get rid uh -huh. of the their fear. Let us see the San Miguel branch in 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 the tail invited the sale invited the state department personnel to attend a public speaking training. Let D my supervisor needs me to organize a nice slide organize a nice slide presentation before next Friday. Let it E, human resource permitted the sick employee to leave the conference room before it and it. In it. Okay. Letter F, the IT manager wants his personnel to be trained on how to give effective, effective presentation. Perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, this is like the grammar, right? So some verbs are commonly followed, not always, but the most common is that it's going to be followed by a noun or a pronoun before they take the infinitive complement. So the structure is like that, verb plus the noun or the pronoun. Remember that the noun is like chair or mother or whatever. And pronoun is he, she, it, or whatever like that, plus the infinitive. 
And there are some verbs that are going to be in the use, uh, in this useful pattern. So for example, we have advice, allow, encourage, expect, invite, need, permit, tell, want, and warn. And there are some examples with those, actually those verbs. Professional presenters advise everybody to prepare a detailed draft of the points that will be developed in the presentation. So actually that is a good topic. I mean, a, a good tip. Uh, pre professional presenters, I mean, people that really know about this one, advise everybody to prepare a draft. So the question here for everybody is, what is a draft? El resume. Please come draft in. is the version previous, the, the ultimate, the last version is only the, the the version you need to corroborate. Co you re review, yes. Okay. You need to review. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a eraser. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in in Spanish <laughs> we say like that one, right? It's it's like. <laughs> Well, we say it's borrador, but in this case, of, the word is draft. Some of the important, yeah. uh, some of the important uh, ideas. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that is a very good advice. I believe that this is what we usually do, right? So when you are going to do a presentation or present a report, you start with a draft. With certain points, yeah. we organize, and then you start checking and correct everything so it looks very nice. So that is a draft. Pre you, preliminary version. Yeah, it's a preliminary version of something that you are going to present in this situation. And it's a very good advice, actually. Uh, let it be says, see some presenters encourage shy and super nervous presenters to take advantage of any public speaking opportunity to get rid of their fear. So what is get rid? That is together, get rid. Uh, make to get rid of to let's disappear to make right. the, the fear away exactly in this case make the fear away so it's to disappear something little by little of course you know actually this is a good tip so uh, if you are nervous and you are shy every time that you have the opportunity to do a presentation do it and you are going to improve it's the same as in English right so if you believe that you need to, uh, that you have problems to speak English, what you need to do is to speak, speak more and more and more. And then, of course, you are going to improve. It's exactly, exactly the same situation here. Let us see. The San Miguel branch invited the sales department personnel to attend a public speaking training. So you can see in all the sentences, it's like that one, right? So the San Miguel branch invited it is the first verb. And then this is the noun. All this that we have here is the noun, the cell department personal. And then we have the infinitive to attend a public speaking training. So that is the structure for all the sentences. Letter D, my supervisor needs me to organize a nice slide presentation before next Friday. Again, uh, this is the principal verb, the, the main verb, needs. Me is, in this case, is an object, a uh, pronoun, and then the infinitive, to organize, okay? And then we have uh, letter E, human resources permitted, in this case, this is in past, the sick employee, that is going to be the noun, and the infinitive, to leave the conference room before it ended, okay? Last one. The IT manager wants simple present tense, main verb. His personal, this is the noun, to be trained. So here is going to be a passive voice. So it's going to be like an infinitive as well. To on how to give effective presentations. So the structure is going to be like that. So please remember that with all these verbs, we're going to, we can use, uh, and the most common uh, pattern is Verb, noun or pronoun, 
and infinity. That will be. Do you have any questions about this? Okay. So let's practice. Okay, here we are. We're going to practice. So we are going to check the uh, exercise number six. Complete the sentences with the words in parentheses. So I believe that you remember that this is the exercise this, that is in the platform. So if you did it, sí. it, it's just a review. And if you haven't done, this is the opportunity. What I'm going to do is this. I know that some of you did it and some of you maybe you didn't do it. So I'm going to give you around five minutes for you to check into that one. Write it down and we're going to check together, okay? Check it out. And if it is so, to the group of a stage fright is what the synthesis.
Okay, have you finished already? Yes. Good, good. So who wants to tell me number one? Me, teacher. Okay, excuse me. Okay, teacher. The main reasons people believe they are poor representers in because they have a lower negative thought to grow until creating a negative image of themselves. Okay, the main reason people believe they are poor presenters is because they have allowed negative thoughts to grow until creating a negative image of themselves. Perfect, very good. So, who wants to share number two? Me, teacher. Perfect, go ahead. An effective thought to get rid of stay fry is for presenters to tell themselves to focus on the audience and not on their fear. Very good, perfect. And again, that is a very good tip, right? So you have to think about the audience, but not about what you fear. Yeah. I don't know if, if you have something like that, but, but if that is the case, there are some techniques for you to check into that one. Good, perfect. Thank you, Manuel. Who wants to share number three? Me, teacher. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. A specialist advice for centers to design visually Eng engaging. engaging presentation to avoid the audience. Boring the audience. Very good. Nice. That is it. Number four. Who wants to share number four? Oh, hi, anybody? Me, teacher. Perfect. Public speaking coaches invite presenters to open their presentation with a thousand provoking questions. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is a very good question. A provoking question, a thought provoking question. Do you believe that it should be legal to do this? For example, right? and everybody's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, so go and say something, right? That, that would be very interesting uh, opening. Perfect, number five. Who wants to share number five? Me, I? Okay. Okay, Carla. <laughs> Thank you. The boss wants use to go over the organization checklist to make sure everything is ready for tomorrow's presentation. Very good. The boss wants us to go over the organization checklist to make sure everything is ready for tomorrow's presentation. Very good. Perfect. And the last one, maybe. Human resources, human resources expect everybody to arrive on time for the presentation on how to deal with the stress at the workplace. Perfect, very good. Thank you very much. That was it. Do you have any questions about this? Human mm -hmm. resources, plural or singular? Uh, that is a plural thing because resources is a plural, plural. word. Yeah. Resources, okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. So let's move on then. We're going to check. Well, before we check into this one, we're going to see a little video, the second video for tonight. So let's see how it goes. Check and tell me um, your opinions or comments about that one. So here we go. To give a successful presentation, they say you need to have a good beginning, a good ending, and keep them close together. And sure enough, research shows that audiences remember the first and last few minutes of a presentation long after they've forgotten most of what was said in the middle. Psychologists call this the primacy recency effect. But you might prefer to think of your opener and your close as two bookends holding up your talk. To do their job, they both need to be strong. Now, starting off by saying good morning, introducing yourself, 
thanking your audience for coming, apologising for a small technical problem with your audio visuals and asking if people can hear you at the back is clearly not a strong opening. But neither is this. I want to talk to you today about the kind of world we, in the business community, are passing on to the next generation. What's wrong with it? It's short, direct and boring. Let's see how it might have sounded. Environmental degradation, a declining economy, crippling taxes, chronic diseases, a life expectancy shorter than that of their parents, and $30,000 of debt for every man, woman and child. This is the nightmare world we're passing on to our kids. Now that's a good opening. Watch how these presenters gain their audience's attention right at the start. Good morning. Sometime in the early 1980s, a business traveller called a low-cost carrier called People Express to reserve a flight. He was kept on hold for so long, he thought to himself, either this airline is incredibly busy or incredibly inefficient. Needless to say, the flight was never booked and People Express went out of business in 1987. The name of the business traveller was Richard Branson, who, recognising a great business opportunity when he saw it, went on to launch Virgin Atlantic Airlines. And the rest, of course, is history. But my question to you is, just how bad does your customer service have to be to turn a potential client into a competitor? There was a great book published a few years back called The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sirowiecki. In it, he refers to the popular TV quiz show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? which I'm sure you've all seen. As you may know, contestants can get help with questions they can't answer by either phoning a friend or asking the audience. As you might expect, calling an intelligent friend helps. 65% of the time, in fact. But here's the interesting thing. The studio audience isn't selected on the basis of their intelligence. So how often do you think they're able to answer the question correctly? 48%. 25%. 33%. The answer is 91% of the time. Statistically, that's just amazing, and it proves the power of teams. I want to say a few things about winning. Did you know that in all the major golf tournaments of the last 25 years, the margin of victory has been less than three strokes? In Formula One motor racing so far this season, the average time difference between first and second place has been just over seven and a half seconds. And remember last Summer Olympics? In the men's 100 meters butterfly, the American swimmer won by one hundredth of a second. One hundredth. It was so close that the Serbian team, who won silver, even filed a protest. These days, in business as in sport, the difference between winning and losing is practically zero. But not quite. In every case, the winner has that vital edge. The figures I'm going to show you this afternoon demonstrate that we too have that marginal, but vital edge. From your audience's point of view, the end of your talk might be even more important than the beginning. These are the words they will be left with after you stop. If you've ever been to a firework display, you'll know that the biggest, brightest fireworks are usually saved for the end. This doesn't mean you have to finish with a bang, but you do want to leave a lasting impression. Watch these presenters clinch the close. To summarise, Whenever we have offered bonuses to incentivize our staff in sales, HR and manufacturing divisions, productivity has increased, in some cases quite dramatically. But as we saw in R&D, introducing pay by performance has had precisely the opposite effect. 
incentivized research units were on average only half as productive as those working without added incentives. What are we to make of this? Well, quite simply, it seems bonuses really do make you work harder when your job is pretty routine. But when your job is creative, incentives just stress you out and actually make you less creative, not more. Clearly, we all need to go away and think of a fresh initiative for motivating our most mission-critical employees. Thanks a lot. As you know, it's a tradition in Asia to quote words of wisdom. So I'm going to be totally predictable and do the same. An ancient philosopher once said, a man who chases two rabbits catches neither. In our research, we've been chasing too many rabbits for far too long. It's time to stop, to prioritize. If there's one thing we now need to do, in a word, it's this, focus. Thank you very much. At the preparation stage, a lot of presenters like to create their clothes first, so they know where they're going, and then work backwards, finishing up with an attention-grabbing opening. But whichever way you plan your talk, make sure you always give priority to the first and last three minutes. Hey, what did you get from the video? When you, uh, if I might, uh, when, when you are preparing a presentation, you have to think about that the most important part of your presentation will be the very three minutes and the very last three last minutes because it is uh, what people uh, kept in mind, are going to keep in mind. Very good. So that is it. The most important part of a presentation is the opening and the closing, right? The opening, because remember that is, this is very similar to the people. When you meet a person at the very beginning, the first impression is very important. And since this is a presentation, uh, you want this to be effective. So the end is going to be very important as well. Good. Any other comments or opinion about the video? Okay, so now we're going to check about the other parts of the grammar. How to use periods, part two. Okay, so there is another chart here, and we're going to read about that one. So we can check about the uh, period uses. Second part, remember that we checked the first part a few days ago. Uh, let's see. Susana Beatriz, could you please help me reading the chart? Okay, teacher. <coughs> oh, you're still sick. If you're still sick, we can choose another person. Yes, teacher. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's see who else is can. Um, Walter Morales. Not possible. Let's see the. Okay, me? go ahead, please. Could you please help me read in the chart? And you see the period. Uh, yeah, all of it, please. Okay. Uh, you see the period at the end of an Indian question. Indian question do not follow the question order. So they do not require a question. Uh, well, yeah. A, the person at joining the meeting, the meeting has asked if the copies have been made. There uh, will be the person at joining the meeting asked if the copies have been made. And second, 
the sales manager inquired what the cause Inquire. of the new choir. Inquired what the cause of the new toy. The new toy is second B, the sales manager inquired what the cost for the new toy is. Um, continue. Yes. You see the very and outside the clock in the parenthesis, except when a adverbial abbreviation inside the party. The meeting room has been reserved in a light having <coughs> on Tuesday uh, 9 p.m. The action point agree on the meeting and approved by everybody new to the closing and morning tour. Can me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And place period inside a, a, a quotation. A quotation marks. The manager stem and innovate on the strategies is necessary to fit the clients. Quite uh, the ninety in silence, the present open is signing, and now we can expect to get in the result. Is we can do it, is we can do it. The same thing, perfect. Thank you very much. So, there are three other things that we need to consider when we are using the period, okay. Um, we checked some of those before, and this is the, the rest. So, use a period at the end of an indirect question. So, remember that we have two kinds of questions. Uh, regular questions, like when you say, uh, is she your sister? And an indirect question. The man wants to know if my, uh, she is my sister. So, in the indirect questions, we are going to use period not a question mark. And that's what it says there. Use a period at the end of an indirect question. Indirect questions do not follow question order. So they do not require a question mark. And we have, uh, well, there are only two examples, 1A and 1B. So 1A is the correct one. The person chairing the meeting asked if the copies had been made. No question mark, period. That is important, and that is the correct one. The one B, it says, it's exactly, exactly the same. Uh, the person chairing the meeting asked if the copies have been made. So, question mark. That is not correct. We don't use question marks for the indirect questions. We use periods. There is another example, 2A and 2B. So, 2A says, the sales manager inquire what the cost of the new toy is, period, okay? And in the 2B, it says the sales manager inquire what the cost of the new toy is, question mark. That is incorrect. We do not use question mark for the indirect questions. Do you have any questions for the first part? Questions, questions? Teacher, uh, in the 2B, for example, if the sentence were a direct question, if you use a question mark, uh, we need to, we uh, we don't place a, a period. Exactly. So we can do an example. For example, uh, the 2B, let's do the 2B. Uh, well, an indirect question is exactly what you said there. The sales manager inquired what the cost of the new toy is. So look at the order. 
The order is is at the end because it's an indirect question. A, a, direct, a direct question is going to be, what is mm -hmm. the cost of the new toy? There, yes, we're going to use a question mark and not a period. And okay. the verb to be is going to be. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Any other question? Okay. So let's check about the second part. Use a period outside the closing parenthesis, except when an abbreviation is inside of the parenthesis. Okay. The meeting room has been reserved till late evening on Thursday, 9 p.m. And the other one says the action points agreed are on at the meeting and approved by everybody need to be closely monitored so that is not good. so every time this is very easy if you have a parenthesis you can put a period outside but if there is an abbreviation inside of the parenthesis we do not it's going to be very easy okay we just need to remember this rule and in the other one in the last one it says place period inside quotation marks. So quotation marks are these ones, right? So when you say something that other people says, there we're going to use quotation marks. Oh my goodness, I cannot take it. Anyways, uh, quotation marks like these ones. So for example, the manager stated, comma, that is important, and you open the quotation mark. And in nobody's strategy is necessary to fight the, uh, the decline in sales. Period. And then the quotation mark. Number two, the presenter opens saying, comma, that is important again, the comma, quotation mark, and then no. We can't expect to get new results if we keep doing the same thing. Quotation mark, and then the period. So you can see that the position of the period. The period, when you use quotation mark, is going to be before the last quotation mark. That is going to be correct. If you put the period outside or after the quotation mark, it's not going to be correct. Okay? It's not going to. Do you have any questions? Okay. That is good. So let's practice, my friends. Here we have. Read the items below. If a period is missing or if it has been misplaced, provide the necessary correction. Okay? So there are six sentences. According to the rules that we checked, so correct the sentence. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to finish that one. Okay?
Okay, have you finished already? Or do you need more time? Nope. Very good, let's check then. Number one, who wants to share number one? The number one, we need to insert the periods uh, within the, um, oh, how do you call it? The stretch mark? Quotation mark, yeah. So uh, it's going to be- before, The quotation mark. Yeah, it's going to be before the Before quotation. the quotation mark. Very good. Quotation, the quotation mark. Nice, okay. thank you, uh, my babe. Number two, who wants to check number two? Uh -huh. I would like to know what the contact information of the presenter is. This is some um, indirect uh, question, teacher. Uh, we don't need a, a question mark, only a period. Very good. So that is it. It's not going to be a question mark, but a period. Thank you very much. Number three, who wants to check number three? Uh, anybody? We have we have a period uh, with him the parentheses and we don't Very need it. Very good, perfect. Thank you. That is it. Nice. Number four. Who wants to check number four? Correct. Oh, it's correct. It's correct. Yes. Uh, Very famous good. Famous entrepreneur who commends. The players are the players. Perfect. But Thank you. That would be if you are an, an A player, hire A players. Good. Number five. Who wants to share number five? The parents share. Very good. So in that one, we don't need the period there in, in, in the parentheses. We right? don't need the period there. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, what about number six? It is the same as, as the second one. Uh, it is an indirect qu question. Then we don't need a, a question mark. We need a period instead. Very good, perfect. So that is it. So in this one, uh, since that is an indirect question, we don't need the question mark. Uh, instead, we need the period, and that will be correct. Very nice. You can see it's very easy. Uh, the only problem is that we need to remember, right? So we need to remember these kind of rules when we are writing um, any kind of document or anything like that. Good, good. Very nice. Um, well, this is what we're going to do for Friday. So we're going to do a, a presentation, right? So in the presentation, you can write uh, one or two objectives, the main points, uh, planning the business presentation, introduction. If you are going to present something uh, like pictures or anything like that, that would be good as well. Uh, that would be for Friday. Uh, that's the other, the other unit. Good. Very nice, so we have a few minutes and today is, it's time for us to practice, free practice, okay? So, we're gonna do individual practice. Let me check who is going to be the first one. Uh, Manuel. Uh, Hello, how are you? What is the dynamic? We're going to speak, that's it. Conversation. Ah, I speak conversation. Yeah. So, hello. How are you? Hey, teacher. Uh, today, uh, I was uh, checking in a in a an app that I have to improve my my English, and I I was. Checking or working in nouns. Okay. Yes. 
a inout I, I found uh, is all uh, it could be names pronouns and anything is announced in a sentence right yeah. and also I found a uh, into the nouns, there are a uh, gender, masculine and feminine. Gender. And all the others is, uh, for example, uh, when we have a uh, plural nouns and, and singular nouns in plural, uh, uh, sometimes change when finish in F and CH uh, sound like T. Uh, this change, for example, a uh, half. Uh, we have a half in in knife. Uh, in plural is uh, knives. 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 Uh -huh. knives. Oh, okay. That's that's all. Perfect. You know, that is very true. I mean, nouns are very important when you are speaking uh, because you need to understand. I mean, sometimes when you, there is something that is called the parts of speech in English. So uh, there are seven different parts. So we have the nouns, the verbs, the adjective, the adverbs. Yes. Um, there are many ways on, on you can check out that one. And understanding those little things, um, that is very important because... Child change to children. Exactly. That is an irregular noun. Yes. Because yes. it's totally different. The same happens with man and man, woman, women. Right? It's just it's man, men. Uh -huh. yes. Or fish, fish. That is the same plural. So anything like that one. It's very interesting. English, you know, English is very interesting. If you research, yes. you are going to find a lot of things. For example, I was reading, I don't remember when. Uh, you know that the roots of English is kind of the same of the roots of German. So in old English, English for a long, long time, uh, you didn't exist. You have to write T-H-O-U and the word is THU. And in German, for you to say you is DU, D-U. So it's almost the same. So it's very interesting how things yeah. are, are like that one, right? Very good. So, uh, what is the name of that application that you're using to learn English? Uh, yes, teacher, it's uh, interesting because the, this app is called uh, English 100 5000 English conversation. We have a uh, grammar conversation at the, for example, the university. Uh, in the street, a restaurant, uh, at the beach, uh, in a uh, bus stop, uh, in any, uh, anywhere. Yes, uh, yes, this is the name, one, 1,500 English conversation, and it's a complete app, very good, yes. Oh, that is interesting. Ah, perfect, you, yeah. You can, you can read it, uh, you can, uh, I don't know. Read it. Uh, you can download, download, and you you can listen to to listen. Yes. Very nice. It's a very complete only, one. Only we need to 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 have a, a internet. Yes. That that is. It. Oh, but that is fine. Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah almost all the apps they use. Yeah. You can so. find you can find it in the Play Store. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, I, I never heard about that one, but according to what you say, it sounds like a very good application. Yes, it's me uh, in 1,5 conversation. Okay. A lot of. A lot of things there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the important is uh, 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 in this app, uh, we can find uh, grammar is important. 
Yeah, I mean, grammar, yeah, it's important because um, as I was telling you before, I mean, if the pronunciation yeah. or the grammar, the order on the sentence is not correct, yes, some sure. people, the people that they don't speak Spanish, they don't understand, yes. right? They get lost. Perfect. Thank you for the tip, Manuel. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's change then. Let's see who is going to be the next. Um, Walter Mauricio. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, teacher. Perfect. Thank you for joining the class tonight. And tell me, um, where do you live? Uh, I live uh, in city of Loquilita. I remember the, the city. Know. The city pusses. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, uh, I recommend uh, my partners, and when they visit. Uh, uh, my city is the good food. Hey, how how many how much time do I have to to drive from San Salvador to Oroquilta if I want to go? There? Oh no, it's uh, ten and twenty five minutes. Okay, that is good. And... Yeah, twenty five minutes, and and when and uh, that I not. A lot of traffic. Okay, very good. That's interesting. Yes. And how many pupusas restaurants do you believe are there in Olocuita? Okay. And the name is La Carmencha. La Carmencha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's good pupusas. <clears throat> I recommend them. And then in Olocuita, all the restaurants are together or you have to look around? Uh, a different restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's but a different the, restaurant. But they're it's not a, on the same street. They are in different streets. Yeah, they are different streets. Okay. And and how and cada esquina? How do you say cada esquina? Every corner. Every corner. Ah yes, every corner. <laughs> the right pupusas. Hey, are there strange pupusas? Pupusas that are not very common. Repeat, please, teacher. Ah, uh, yeah. Are there strange pupusas that you have tried? Different pupusas, strange. Ah, uh, yeah, different. Is the the ajo, garlic. The yeah, they are different. It's a good. It's a good. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I would. Nice, very good. Yeah. Hey, I, I remember that. Uh, I mean, you are from Real Madrid, right? But they're not going to the final. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who do you uh, think is going to win? Uh, Manchester City or Inter? Oh my God. Is the, and the good soccer and the uh, Manchester City team? Uh, really it's a good, it's a good uh, dominant, yes. It's a good dominant and and, and this champion. Yeah, very good, right? They yeah. they play very good. So let's see what yes. happens. And with fun is the recognize uh and when and one equipment is good. Okay. How long is it right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the moment. It's a uh, 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 the best equipment in the world. Yeah, probably you're right. Yeah. And and only and only and only needs a uh, a championship. They have they, never won uh, that. Any? Yeah, they have never won a a Champions League. Do you know? No. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, let's see how it goes, right? It's going to be a very good match, and let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I have a <clears throat> uh, uh, new teacher. I like to watch in the soccer. And Saturday is the final Manchester City, Manchester United, if we are good. That is true. Uh, what, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what time is going to be that one? Do you know? And 
7 7 a.m. in the morning at 7 a.m. Yeah, in the morning in the morning okay. final oh i have to it's, see that it's possible uh watching the the games yeah it sounds like a very good plan to start your saturday yeah okay <laughs> very good perfect thank you walter it was a pleasure thank you thank you teacher. good mm -hmm. good one more we have chance to get one more uh let's see rosa elena hello hello how are you hi a little uh, tired about but okay <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Uh, it's Monday, it's but anyway, Monday. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we're, we're just so tired. Okay. Nice. And where do you live? I live in La Gloria. Oh, I remember yeah. you told me that, yeah. Live in how, La Gloria. How is the traffic nowadays there? Oh, my God. <laughs> Every day is terrific. It's terrible. It's yeah, terrible. terrible. It's a terrible traffic. I leave my home at a five fifty, and I I arrive to to La Campana, Salvador del Mundo, mm -hmm. at seven uh, ten minutes ten minutes past seven. I I arrive early because I. I get into work at eight, but sometimes I I arrive about seven thirty. It depends on the traffic, but it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah that is all a lot people, of time because yeah, they, all the they, people comes to the Integración Boulevard. Yeah, it's terrible. Okay, but if, let me ask you. I used about. to. <laughs> if you if you were the president of El Salvador, what would you do to fix the traffic problem? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It's it's a difficult question. Maybe mm. that's the reason the, the president doesn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably that's the reason. Maybe they sit down yeah. and think about it and they say. There's no solution here. Let's go home. Yeah, it's so difficult. All the people tell, okay, we need to change the, the schedule of the school, the, the work. I, I, I didn't, I don't think that it works. Yeah, me. Change the, yeah, change the, the time. No, I, 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 I say mm -mm, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I believe it's not going to work. But yeah, traffic is a big problem. But actually, here in Santa Ana also, now we have a lot of traffic. So it's not always, it's a certain time. For example, at 5 p.m., sometimes it's very hard. So it's something that is happening yeah. in all the cities. I mean, it's... Sometimes, it's mm -hmm. sometimes at night, when we left the work, uh, and I can I come with my with my partner. Sometimes the traffic is oh my god! I say where are the people, because in ten minutes, I'm here at home, and other and other days oh my god one hour, one hour and a half, and the traffic is terrible at night. Also at night. Yeah. But I I say. When there's nobody in the street, what happened here? It's so it's so rare, rare, rarely. Rarely, huh? Uh, yeah, but it happens sometimes. Okay, so that is I believe that that is the real situation. I mean, uh, if there were no traffic, I mean maybe you have to travel just ten minutes and that's it, right? So yeah, yeah, but that is also when Salvador del Mundo is is alone and. Oh my God! What happened here? Nobody is on the street. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, almost on Friday, the traffic is terrible in that uh, area. Yeah, yes. Friday, 
on Friday late. It's terrible around the Saturday morning. Yeah, I know that is that is very crowded and well. So yes. we have we have to wait for the flying cars. Yes, I'm waiting for them. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a very good thing, but yeah, I, I don't yes. know if we would be able to see that one. Anyways. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you, Rose. Okay. Very good, my friends. So um, this was the class of tonight. And let me ask you, do you have any questions before we finish? No questions. Good. So the 101 of tonight is going to be for my bay. And let's check the attendance and then let's go, let's go to bed. So, Ada, Patricia, Linares, Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana, Stephanie, Martinez, Flores. Present. Good. Alejandra, Michelle, Hueso, Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana, Selmi, Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin, Alexander, Ayala, Eraso. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado Serrano. Present. Good. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good night. Good night. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Okay, my Blessings. friends. Blessings. It was a pleasure to be with you. Have a good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Blessings. Good night. Blessings. Good night. Good night.